Good afternoon. Welcome back. Grade 12 history. Monday, June the 8th. Yeah, June. Isn't that something? Um, today is our last lesson. And we got a good one here. We've got Blackbeard, one of the most famous of all the pirates. Um, so I'm going to read this to you shortly. Uh, just a few instructions first for those of you who are just going to read through on your own. You know it's uploaded, starts page 122, runs for a few pages. Um, this is our last lesson. Uh, so fill out your piracy concept chart, send me the answers, and I'll, I'll reply. We're going to have a project that I'm going to give you later this week. Does not cover, this is not a culminating project that covers the whole course. It's going to be something that covers this unit. Um, and then we'll, we'll wrap things up and we'll have it. And once you get that into me, I'll have a final mark for you. So no exam, no big culminating project at the end. We'll leave it. Uh, we'll just be using our term work. Um, so work hard on, the, on, on that project when it comes in. Work hard on this lesson, but then in particular the project that you're going to get later this week. I'm thinking Wednesday or Thursday I'll probably post it, and that'll be our last activity. And once that's done and marked, I can send you your final mark. Alrighty, so if you need a little help with the reading, uh, have a look at it and, and follow along with me. Uh, if you don't, you can, you can stop the video now and get to work on your piracy concept chart and then send it in. But this is topic number four, Blackbeard. And I'm going to read it here for, for those of you who are sticking around for the reading. Of all the pirates, only Edward Teach, more famously known as Blackbeard, suffered the kind of death fit for the movie screen. Blackbeard died November 22nd, 1718, in a fight with the Royal Navy. Acting under orders from the governor of Virginia, Lieutenant Robert Maynard led the British naval forces attack. Maynard found Blackbeard's ship, Queen Anne's Revenge, hiding in an inlet off North Carolina and fought his way on board. Just as Blackbeard was about to run his sword through Maynard, a Royal Navy sailor slashed the pirate's neck, causing Blackbeard to miss Maynard. Maynard jumped to his feet and fired his musket. It was like a gun. The small lead ball slowed Blackbeard enough for Maynard's men to slash the pirate with their swords. Even with at least 20 sword slashes and five musket ball wounds, Blackbeard fought on. Uh, he pulled one after another of his pistols from the broad belt across his chest and fired. Finally, as he cocked one last pistol, he fell dead on the blood-stained deck. Uh, and there's a painting here on the opposite page sort of demonstrating what that might have looked like. Little is known about Blackbeard's youth. He served aboard an English ship during the years when Britain took part in the War of the Spanish Succession. When Britain withdrew from the war, Blackbeard stayed at sea. He transferred his loyalty from King George um, to Benjamin Hornigold, a pirateer turned pirate. Hornigold placed Blackbeard in command of a captured one-masted ship. In 1717, the two pirates robbed several ships together. Then, after accepting a pardon from the king, Hornigold retired from piracy. Blackbeard refused the pardon and stayed at sea. Blackbeard's career shows how thin the line was between being a privateer sailing for the government and being a pirate. It also reveals how much governors in such poor British provinces as North Carolina were involved with piracy. After Blackbeard's death, Robert Maynard read through the pirate's papers. To Maynard's surprise, he found a letter written by Tobias Knight, the secretary and chief justice, a, law, a judge of North Carolina. In the letter, Knight warned Blackbeard of Maynard's mission. Knight ended the letter with the words, My hearty respects to you and am your real friend and servant. That's something. Another paper Maynard discovered showed that Blackbeard had delivered 40 barrels of sugar tonight. Maynard assumed this delivery was a bribe paid by Blackbeard tonight. Maynard wasted no time before sailing across Pimlico Bay. His arrival in Bath, Virginia was not soon forgotten. Hanging from his bowsprit, uh, that's like a pole on the bow of his ship, was Blackbeard's severed head. 
Knight surrendered the sugar and Maynard turned it over to the government of North Carolina. There are many legends about Blackbeard. One tells that from time to time he would shoot a member of his crew just to keep the others in line. He was a tough guy. Another legend says that Blackbeard once ordered his men into the sealed hole of his ship in which he had lit brimstone. Every member of the crew fled the smoke. Only then did Blackbeard climb out from the hole shouting, Came ye, ye yellow-bellied sap suckers, I'm a better man than all ye milk sops put together. According to another legend, and of course a legend is a story that may or may not be true. When Blackbeard went ashore to bury treasure, he would take a crewman along to help carry the heavy sea chest, and Blackbeard would then return to the ship alone. Blackbeard also had a flair for the dramatic. Before attacking a ship, he wove burning fuses into his long beard and braids to surround himself with smoke. His appearance increased the terror of those he attacked. And while he did not sail um, under a, a pirate's flag, he did fly a black flag with a skeleton-like figure holding a pitchfork. And there's a picture there in your text, and I think that's where our modern images of pirates comes from. Blackbeard performed his most successful deed in the spring of 1718 when he blockaded the port of Charleston, South Carolina. He and his crew attacked any ship that tried to enter or leave. He also took prisoners, including one of Charleston's leading citizens. He then exchanged his prisoner for ransom, not gold, but medicine. Another regular sail uh, aboard regular sailing ships, crew members were subject to the captain's absolute will through the captain's orders. On British warships, discipline was brutal. Pirate crews, however, voted their captain. A pirate's captain's commands were absolute only in combat. It was not uncommon for a privateer captain to take 14 shares of captured treasure to a common sailor's one. Pirate captains normally only took two shares. Many of the crew members on regular ships were not even sailors. They might have gotten drunk and found themselves on the ship when they woke up. During wartime, the Royal Navy filled its crews by forcing men uh, from seaside towns to join. This meant that men were rounded up uh, by gangs serving under naval authorities and forced to become sailors. In some cases, men were seized at sea by pirates and threatened with death if they didn't join the crew. However, there is no evidence that either Blackbeard or others did this with their crews. Most who joined pirate crews did so of their own free will. All right, and some, some great images for you to look at as well. So the piracy concept chart, fill it in. Uh, you should be able to fill in all four sections this time. Uh, send it to me. I'll send it back to you with any corrections. And then later in the week, you will get your project, your last project, and it'll be on pirates. Take care.